Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Brendan Bird. Definitely just want to just get on here for, for a moment. Um, you know, I fortunately, I did not make the parade yesterday for the MLK. Um, my sister, though, was there, so follow her, you know, at Kate Magic or BG or BG Scurry on, um, on her YouTube. Or I'll take at Kate, at Kate, uh, at Kate Magic um, on Twitter and maybe you too. I think she maybe changed it. But uh but yeah, she was present there um from what from what I see and what I heard about the other people from the eighty West chapter of Houston. It was a success. Shout out to them. Um they you know, they got people um they started to forty people to to read on some information about the reparation, the black agenda. Uh, black economic, you know, black economic and black empowerment as well. So there, like I said, there's many, many things that's going on that I was definitely proud of. Um, like I said, I'm gonna probably end up, I'm gonna probably end up uh, contributing uh, a little bit more money to to our group so we can do more things and stuff. And also just you know just keep really just you know educating our our. Uh, you know, educating the, you know, the, the collective on the black empowerment, this economic, and this politic, you know, but really just get them more into self-pride of their group, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, because I think the thing is, you really want to do ownership and entrepreneurship that is ownership. Um, that's the name of the game. That's really what you need to thrive to build wealth. Uh, well, just getting the check, but that's the gift that's all. So, but... Saw that I really want to talk about. Uh, you know, they came out yesterday with. Um, you know, they came out with the most educated states. Texas uh, that I stay in was ranked number thirty-nine, almost in the bottom of the, of the list. Only, only about eleven states uh, basically ahead of Texas, and um, you know. Being other states or whatever, and, and I think number one, I think was uh, was I think it was uh, Connecticut. I mean, yeah, I think it was uh, yeah, it was Massachusetts number one. So um, the thing about the education factor and the non-education factor is really with the industries that are in those states. I mean, in Boston or Massachusetts, I mean the states. Um, there's not much of an industry as it used to be in, in Massachusetts or New England, but it's more of old money, of old wealth. While you in Texas, you have an oil industry, you have an oil and gas industry that's still fairly new and still fairly booming because the energy sector that you know that you know, that that we're in, we're in an oil, petroleum-based, fossil fuel, energy. Um, industry so I mean so and that's why now was booming until green energy become the thing and become a, a, a dominant energy source um, you're going the oil and gas industry is always going to be number one priority that's just what it is so we think about education um, from when you look at Massachusetts to looking at Texas um, even though the education is, is, is not as prevalent and very, very lopsided, the and, and there is a there is a higher uh, you know a higher economic uh, medium household range. But the thing about being in prosperity with an uh, economy is Texas got a better economy than Massachusetts. Um, Different people can actually thrive in a Texas market versus a Massachusetts market. You really, really, really have to have almost like a codified solidarity of practice in politics and economics. That's really what it is. Um, but the thing I want to also talk about as well is the Houston housing and transportation costs. Uh, I know people know the houses around Houston's around 
It's a little over 1,300. You know what I'm saying? 1,300 is, more, is mainly the medium uh, market range for housing. Um, if you're renting or even buying, 1,300 is normally the, the average number versus 1,700 in an average market, housing market in New York City or New York State or which New York City, let's just say that. So, but the thing about it was Houston is constantly rising of, of their housing. Their housing prices are, are constant rising. Um, to even, they even did the calculation of transportation costs. And it's not public transportation I'm talking about. This is, but this is people that's commuters. And they are spending over $1,100 a year on transportation costs. Um, actually, so I think it's like $1,152. That's actually 39% more of the transportation costs in New York. That's, so basically, New York spend on transportation almost close to 60% lesser than what Houstonian spend on transportation. Um, and that's that's basically, like I said, like commuters and stuff like that. That's, that, that could go with gas, uh, car maintenance. So, and, and they said the, the average cost in the annually, um, or annually, is, is over $1,100. About, you know, about you know, $1,152. So, you add that into the factor of $1,300 a month. That's, that would make Houston basically on par with New York City to the point it's, it's, I think the only um, disparity of the numbers would make Houston a little bit cheaper is only by $79 between $79 to $100 cheaper and that is very telling when a lot of people look at Houston or anywhere uh, beside, you know, beside uh, New York or Chicago or uh, Los Angeles as cheaper housing and a better standard of living even though standard of living is quite better in Houston I have no problem with that but it still has uh, the situation of cost of housing the cost of transportation is going to get worse if they do, if they do not solve their transportation problem as you know the, you know uh, Houston's a sprawling uh, cities, a sprawling uh, metropolitan. You basically, get, it, it just, it's just, it's just spread everywhere. So driving is very, very likely that you have to do. Like, there's no really no public transportation unless you live in the core urban areas. Their public transportation don't really leave the city of Houston. Um, basically, what that meeting is. If you live in like a Baytown, you live in a, in a Katy, Texas, or you live in a, a, a Conroe, Texas, or even matter of fact, Spring, Texas, or the Woodlands, or you live in a, in a, in a, in a League City or Webster, or even a Pearland, or, a, or even a, uh, you know, even somewhere with Sugar Land, or, you know, or Cypress, or some, you know, just those areas. Or even a humble Texas or anything beyond of that nature, you you're not you're not really going to have a public transportation present at all. Um, I know they build, they're doing the light rail. I know they got light rail. Um, they've been having the light rail since 2002, 2003. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, but the, like I said, the, the, the light rail they have is only really going around the, the city. It's not really going around the suburbs or the or certain suburban uh, center points, what I call it, like places that is like in the, out in the suburbs are basically centric points that a population, even the suburbs, will gravitate to. They are, they're, they're, they're not even targeting those, so... When you think about it, it's a uh, it's a it's a dire situation of Houston. Uh, 
They even talking about from the, the you know, if you look at death or the, even the low birth rate they have out here. You got people really moving out here. They said the population was actually staggering. But the only thing that saved Houston on the sensor and even population growth was actually international migration. So that was the only thing that was keeping Houston in, 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 a, in a positive of uh, basically population growth. But a lot of people is moving out of Houston, even moving out the metro, because of the of just the, the the rising cost of just not just housing, but the rising cost of everything else, uh, especially in transportation costs. So that's a that's a big factor. I definitely want to talk about because you think about as you know, Black Americans, AUS or FBAs, you. You, you don't, if you don't have, if you don't have a, a, a good source of employment or even um, an entrepreneurship of, of, of a revenue stream, you can actually struggle. This could be a hard life if you really want to look at it that way uh, when you think about it. So just a, just a key fact on it that Houston is, is, is not going to get, it's going to get worse if they do not get not just their housing in order, but their transportation cost factor in order. And if not, this is going to be a very, um, very difficult city to actually live in. The city could actually be like a New York or a San Francisco or LA, or, you know, it's going to be too expensive to live in. Most most of America is already doing that now. There's high rent everywhere. There's high housing everywhere. There ain't no more such thing as cheap housing or even cheap rent, nothing like that. Everything is already high marker and my, and, and high mark and high value. So if your standard of living is not continuously keeping pace with the, the standard of, of housing and even transportation costs, homelessness would definitely be... Uh, a key factor in you basically not succeeding or not even enjoying the American life. But like I said, man, I'm going to definitely get with you guys real soon and I'm going to hit you guys up there, all right? One.